different causes of bullous disorders. Learning about the pathogenesis of bullous formation pertaining to some important conditions. To know the clinical presentation, diagnosis and treatment of some important bullous diseases and to know the important differentiating features of some between some diseases. First of all, introduction. Why there is bliss deformation? We all know that skin is a compact structure. It has got three layers, epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous. There are many adhesion molecules which are holding skin together. So skin remains intact normally in normal individuals. So why bullous formation occur? We will discuss that. First of all, what is blister? Blister is the accumulation of fluid within or below the, uh, below the epidermis. We have already discussed in our lecture on basic terminologies that uh, anything, uh, any water filled lesion which is less than 0.5 cm, we call it vesicle. If it is more than 0.5 cm, we call it bullous or bully. The cleavage or the accumulation may be at different layers of the skin. If it is within the epidermis, the roof will be thin because roof is thin, it can be easily ruptured. That's logic. It will be even more thinner if it is in the subcarnal level. Superficial, superficial layer of the stratum carnum is the stratum. Uh, is if it's within that layers, carnum layer we call it, it will be subcarnial and the roof will be very thin. It may be below the epidermis in the subepidermal level. In that case, the roof will be intact and thick. Here we go. This is the uh, cleavage within the superficial layer of the epidermis. This is stratocarnium. This is subcarnial level. Roof is very thin. This is within the epidermis but uh, suprabasal. This is basal layer. This is suprabasal. The roof is This is the roof. This is thicker as compared to this one. This is subepidermal. Roof is even more thicker. Whole epidermis is there, and the cleavage is below the epidermis. You can see here. So subcarnial, one thinner, very thinner, suprabasal thicker than this, than the subepidermal, below the epidermis, quite a thick one. Bully will be dense hair, fragile hair, and in this case you may not be able to see the bully. You can only see the scaling. We will discuss that. So what are different reasons forming the cleavage? Different diseases have got different uh, pathogenesis leading to the uh, bullous formation. In some diseases, there is epidermal edema, we call it spongiosis in histopathological term, which is the se which causes separation between the keratinocytes. Take example of the uh, war infections, eczemas, and then the and some diseases there. There is epidermal necrosis as it occurs in the AIDS or multiformy and toxic epidermal necrosis. In toxic epidermal, epidermal necrosis, 
there is necrosis of the whole epidermal layer. There may be damage to the intercellular adhesion molecules or connections as it occur in the pemphigus. In, in lupus erythematosus or lacquer pelvis, there is the basal cell degeneration which leads to the bullous formation, it may lead to bullous formation. In pemphigoid, there is subepidermal bully, the damage to basal cell membrane. Whereas in dermated herpetiformis, there is uh, damage at the dermal level. So, all these things may lead to the bullous formation, different pathogenesis. Now, coming to the ballistic disturbance, we can classify into two main two, two types genetic and acquired variety. In genetic variety, we have epidermis bullous or congenital type. And acquired type we have uh, due to physical reasons like burn, trauma, cold, heat, or maybe to in inflammatory reasons like uh, contact eczemas, like uh, in infections may there be viral, bacterial, then there is immunological reasons as it happens in immunobullous disorders or, or autoimmune basic disorders, there may be because of reaction to drugs. So, these are acquired varieties and the causing the uh, basic disorders. Now, if any patient is coming to you with basic disorders, how to proceed? Of course, history is the most important here. As any other illnesses, history is of course important. With history, we can uh, take the um, history of onset of the disease. Congenital bullous disorders start very early in life. Remember, if there is associated itching or pain, itching may occur with severe itching may occur in dermatitis, herpetiformis, and also in the uh, pemphigoid there is itching. History of any uh, drug intake that may help out if there is a drug eruption. Remember, on examination we can see the uh, underlying skin whether it is uh, skin is uh, 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 is there any papules or articular lesions? Whether the bullous bullies are tense or fragile any excretion marks, and of course, the uh, further we proceed with the biopsy which is a gold standard in any other skin condition, we see the uh, standard section of histopathology, we can see the level of cleavage here, different diseases have got different uh, cleavage, different level of cleavage like mephigoas, intra epidermal, we will discuss that. Then there is special technique we call immunofluorescence, it may be direct or indirect very important as far as the immunobullous disorders are concerned. Then the electron microscopy not available everywhere. We can see the uh, precisely we can see the uh, level of involvement. We can send the blood, we can check for circulating antibodies. If we suspect the uh, viral or bacterial infection, we can take the swab as far the most contagious Stabilococcal aureus or the for the herpes lesions. If there are congenital disorders, we can uh, do the genetic investigations. Not available everywhere. Remember. Now one by one we'll cover the uh, different blessing disorders. We'll start with congenital one. Epidermolysis bullosa, very important condition, very, very important. What are epidermolysis? Basically, they are group of inherited dis disorders characterized by blistering lesions on skin and mucous membrane, mostly involving the fractional side, but they may occur at other sites too. But mainly fractional sites or traumatized sites are involved. 
in some cases internal organs may be affected like uh, esophagus or urethra why the epidermal bullets occur these lesions occur because there is some structural defect genetically present since birth in the skin itself as i told you before there are addition molecules which are holding skin layers together there may be something wrong some structural defect within the adhesion molecules causing the cleavage within the skin as a different layers leading to bullous formation here it goes there are four types major types of uh, epidermal bullosas simplex junctional dystrophic and kindler syndrome dystrophic is divided in, in, into two forms dominant dystrophic and recessive dystrophic now we see the level of involvement here in this diagram first one is epidermal epidermal bullosa or simplex variety as the name suggests it involves the epidermal layer this is epidermal here tono filaments are probably involved here leading to cleavage formation if we talk of a junctional as the name suggests it occurs at junctional level this is junctional level this is lamina lucida the cleavage is here there is abnormality in the hemidesmosomes or sublamina dense plate there is dermal or dystrophic epidermolosa the name suggests the problem is in the dermis here in the incurring fibrils so addition molecules they are all addition molecules holding holding skin together involved in different types of bullosas leading to cleavage formation which in, in turn leads to bullous formation in kindler uh, syndrome the cleavage may be at different levels not necessarily at one level it may be in the uh, basal cartilaginous level may be within the uh, basal basement membrane so different level in kindler syndrome this is simplex variety which is the most common type of epidermal bullosa the blistering is within the epidermis as we discussed before mostly fractional sites are involved the presentations are different sometimes it just involves the uh, few sites like hands and feet and sometimes it's generalized variety nails and mucosa most commonly are not involved except in few generalized types as the lesions are superficial there is no scarring remember you can see here the bullus a big bullus here on the foot yeah intrabidermal this uh, this, this is inherited as autosomal dominant this is autosomal recessive junction variety here basal lamina is involved it is a rare form but very little there is large involvement of the skin with erosions and flaccid blisters in this case mucosa and involvement of nail occur you can see here large areas of denudation on the body this is junctional variety as the name suggests it occurs at the basement membrane zone junctional 
these are legions c erosions in dominate dystrophic the legions occur mostly on the fractional sides the healing is with scarring and milia formation there is no nail involvement uh, sorry there's nail involvement there is nail involvement but no mucosal involvement see here heat lesions with scarring and milia formation see here milia white these are white milky white lesions these are milias here are two milias the scarring because the lesions are deeper at the dermal level it is the heal with the scarring and milia formation this is knee area one of the commonest fractional site dystrophic recessive type is uh, as the name suggests the inheritance is out of some recessive there are, there are some epidermal blisters and heal with scarring there are fixed deformities of the fingers and loss of nails even the finger and toes may be lost or fused together and may be unfunctional remember they fused together and lost there may be severe involvement of the teeth mouth and part of the esophagus very severe condition you can see here erosions here we can see the fused uh, fingers loss of digits fused fingers loss of digits the scarring here very severe form lives become miserable there will host the voice to because involvement of esophagus kinder syndrome is very rare disorder it's inherited and also so much recessive there is blistering mostly involve hands and feet along with there there is photosensitivity remember photosensitivity occurs in kindler syndrome not in epidermal um, epidermal type or reactional type or dystrophic type it occurs in kindler syndrome they are associated altered pigmentation and skin atrophy in kindler syndrome so blistering photosensitivity altered pigmentation and atrophy remember associated with kindler syndrome there is blistering most of blistering occurs on hands and feet there is severe mucosal involvement in kindler syndrome here you can see the pigmentation if we see the uh, patient you can even observe the tail injectors yes whenever there is atrophy tail injectors are pigmentation or three to five call it poikiloderma which is a feature in kindler syndrome poikiloderma in the pic we see the severe dental gum involvement this is pigmentation pigmentation on the body this is papery scarring secondary to the and hence this is secondary to the bullous eruption now how you diagnose remember history is very important and we take the family history also you can see the uh, inheritance pattern while taking the family history on the uh, 
if we take we can take the uh, skin biopsy and uh, histopathology we can see the level of cleavage they can help us out to reach the type of the uh, epidermal bullosa whether the cleavage is within the epidermis or sub epidermal level remember there is no effective treatment available for bullosa genetic counseling is very very important here very very important remember then there is symptomatic care of the of the wounds what is the goal of treatment the goal is to take care of the wound to, to stop new blister formation promote healing of the lesions and of course prevent complications there is uh, on the fractional side maybe other part of the body there are erosions blisters and skin becomes raw point of entry of different uh, organisms or bacteria so we need to apply antibacterial cream on the affected areas if the raw areas are uh, widely distributed we can even start on the system antibiotic remember we need to advise the parents to avoid friction that is very very important avoid friction is very very important because whenever there is a friction there is trauma there will be blister eruption so avoidance is very very important is of course we need to prevent complications complications may be because of, uh, may lead to septicemia or water electrolyte imbalance if the uh, raw areas are wide distributed there may be uh, water electrolyte imbalance we need to correct that so infection care water electrolyte balance and the uh, very very important so now we come to the uh, acquired variety of blistering conditions two of the most are infections maybe viral bacterial herpes you know herpes simplex herpes zoster chicken pox empitigo bullous empitigo all are causes of the blistering on the skin in, in autoimmune causes we have all immobile disorder we'll discuss that other causes may be physical like uh, trauma burn cold and so on now coming to bacterial varieties this is the honey casting this is bullous empitigo uh, this is uh, empitigo not bullous one this is empitigo there is one more variety of empitigo we call it bullous empitigo where where you can see the, actually the bullous or bully so if you can see the honey casting this is very common in the young children strep and strep are the causes are, are the causes to organisms this slide this slide shows the picture of streptococcal scarred skin syndrome this occurs because of the release of epidermolysin which is streptococcal exotoxin exotoxin and uh, it epidermolysin yeah this exotox uh, this exotoxin will cause the cleavage within the epidermis the infection itself may be somewhere in the conjunctiva or in the ear may be releasing epidermolysin or exotoxin causing cleavage within the epidermal layer initially skin becomes red painful very tender later on it starts peeling off like a burn if you take swab from the scalded areas you will not grow anything remember this thing alhamdulillah the mortality is very less nowadays because of the 
antibiotics easily available and covers the streptococcal infection used to be high in the pre antibiotic era this is very common in nursery uh, unit nurseries these are erosions because of the drug reaction this is very severe form of drug reaction this is toxic epidermal necrolysis a rare variety it may occur with the uh, different drugs like sulfonamides anti epileptic drugs allopurinol so the cleavage is at the sub epidermal level there is bullous formation and necrosis the skin becomes red painful there is bullous eruption very severe condition there will be associated mucosal involvement may at least two mucosa may be involved or even more nikolsky sign will be positive and toxic epidermal necrosis what is nikolsky sign if you put sliding pressure with your finger on the skin of individual having toxic epidermal necrosis or pemphigus vulgaris one layer of the epidermis will slide over the another layer because of the cleavage it may lead to the erosion formation this is nikolsky sign putting the sliding pressure by a finger on the normal looking skin one layer may slide over another layer because of the cleavage present and may lead to the erosion formation the highest associated mortality with this condition around 25% support care is very important here you treat the patient as a burn case gives them uh, stop the offending drug which is very very important here you need to uh, take care of the uh, water electrolytes you need to take care of the uh, secondary infections leading to septicemia good antibody cover very very important you may some people may uh, start on the uh, steroids especially in the initial phase though it's controversial if it is given in the initial phase it may hard the process of the damage plasma fluorosis can be done here and iv immunoglobulins can be given here you can see a pic these are erosions skin is necrosed and eroded very painful condition like a burn see here immunobullous disorders are the important bullous disorders remember very very important what are those these are group of disorders where antibodies are formed and directed against different adhesion molecules so may be divided broadly into intraepidermal variety in epi intraepidermal variety we have pemphigus vulgaris and its variant pemphigus vegetans pemphigus foliaceus and its variant pemphigus erythematosus in sub epidermal variety we have bullous pemphigoid pemphigoid gestations linear iga disease dermatitis herpetiformis and epidermolus bullosa acquisita we'll cover all those no worries what what is the problem in immunobullous disorder what is pathophysiology remember there are auto antibodies formation because there are autoimmune diseases these auto antibody may be igg or iga or maybe igm in few conditions these combined with antigens 
which are addition molecules. Different diseases have got different targeted antigens. There is the formation of antigen antibody is complex by combining these two, which leads to complete made activation. There is cascade of reactions causing release of proteolytic enzymes. These enzymes in will cause the cleavage at different levels depending on the disease. Remember, in this pic we can see the uh, different uh, adhesion molecules. These are desmosomes. Those are keratinocytes. These keratinocytes are held together tightly by these adhesion molecules. These are the targets antigen in the pemphigus vulgaris. There are desmoglin 1 and desmoglin 3. Okay. Now coming to the hemidesmosomes, these are attachments. These are the target antigens in case of bullous pemphigoid. Whereas in dermatite herpetiformis, dermal pepil is involved. In this pic, we can see the bullous pemphigoid antigen. These are hemidesmosomes. Very important structure in the skin. Very bioadhesion molecules. Other molecules which are holding skin together are anchoring fibrils, many many filaments and here we can, there, there are uh, desmosomes holding keratinous, keratinocytes together. Very briefly, this, uh, this diagram shows the level of cleavage and type of antibody involved in uh, different immunobullous disorders. This is pemphigus vulgaris, this is epidermis, this is intraepidermal bullous uh, cleavage, intraepidermal. The immunoglobin involved are mostly is IgG and C3. In some cases, IgA may also be involved. Commonest are IgG and C3. Whereas in pemphigoid, the cleavage is below the epidermis. Remember, these are isophil cells mostly. Immunoglobin involved are mostly IgG and C3, whereas dermatitis herpetiformis, the cleavage is also subepidermal. Cells involved are mostly neutrophils or eosinophils. Immunoglobulins are IgA. These are produced because of the gluten. In gluten, there is gliadin. Again, gliadin, these antibodies are produced. So, intraepidermal for pemphigus vulgaris, subepidermal in for pemphigoid and DH. IgG and IgG mostly in pemphigus pemphigoid, whereas IgA in dermatitis herpetiformis. Now, the uh, immunofluorescence, few words about, about immunofluorescence. This is a, speci a specialized technique where tech antibodies are used to help us out to reach the diagnosis of immunobullous disorders and, and as well as in, a, in some other conditions too like vasculitis. So basically there are two types direct and indirect. 
in direct variety primary antibody is used this is primary antibody which is ticked this material fluoresces on special light remember chamakta hai ye ye antibodies hoti hain inko hum primary antibodies bolte hain ye incubate ki jati hain substrate ke sath substrate kya hota hai perilineal skin पेफिगस में पेफिगोइड में और डर्मेटेटर्स हरपेटी फार्म में उसमें जो प्रेशर होता है उसके इस, उसका इस, उसके पेरिलीन स्किन से बायोप्सी ली जाती है उसको इनक्यूबेट किया जाता है विद प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी जो टैग्ड होती है क्योंकि इसका आ, एंटीजन कोई भी हो सकता है हेमिडेसमोसोम्स डेस्मोसोम्स वो जाके वहाँ कंबाइन हो जाएगी फिर हम इसको जब स्पेशल लाइट में देखेंगे तो प्रेसली लोकलाइज कर सकेंगे कि कहाँ पे वो एंटीजन है कौन सा है कहाँ पे एंटीजन है और एक स्पेसिफिक पैटर्न हमें मिलेगा इम्यूनो माइक्रोस्कोप पे तो जिससे हम डायग्नोज कर सकते हैं कि कौन सी एंटीबॉडी है और कौन सा पैटर्न इम्यूनोफ्लोरस पे आ रहा है जिससे हमें डिजीज का पता चलेगा तो डिफरेंट डिजीज का डिफरेंट पैटर्न है तो हम उस पर जाएंगे देखेंगे आगे चल के इन डायरेक्ट वेराइटी में हम पेरी लीजल स्किन नहीं लेते रिमेंबर हम टारगेट करते हैं सर्कुलेटिंग एंटीबॉडीज को जो मौजूद होती हैं ब्लड में तो हमने सर्कुलेटिंग एंटीबॉडीज हमने ब्लड लिया उससे प्लाज्मा सेपरेट किया उसके अंदर प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडीज मौजूद हैं जो डिजीज प्रोड्यूस कर रही हैं हम इन एंटीबॉडीज के अगेंस्ट ये एंटीबॉडीज सेकेंडरी एंटीबॉडी यूज करते हैं जो टेक्ट होते हैं ये जाके कंबाइन करती हैं क्योंकि एंटी आईजीजी या एंटी आईजी होती हैं तो अपने अपने इनका टारगेट ये प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी होता है एंटीबॉडी होती है ये इससे जाके कंबाइन करती है तो सबस्टेट इसमें हम क्या लेते हैं माकीज ईसोफेगस और स्किन ऑफ अ नॉर्मल स्किन स्किन ऑफ अ नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल नॉट ए डिजीज इंडिविजुअल तो स्टेटिफाइड एपिथेलम जो मार्किसोवेगस का होता है उसके अंदर एंटीजेंस मौजूद होते हैं ठीक है तो जब आप इसको हम इंक्यूबेट करते हैं प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी के साथ तो प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी जाए कंबाइन करेगी अपने एंटीजन के साथ जो स्टेटिफाइड एपिथेलम ऑफ दिमाकी इसोफेगस में मौजूद है या नॉर्मल स्किन ऑफ अ नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल में मौजूद है इसके हम नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल मौजूद है तो जब ये उससे कंबाइन करेगा अपने एंटीजन के साथ उसके साथ फिर ये टेक एंटीबॉडीज कंबाइन करेंगी प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडी के साथ तो उससे हमें एक पैटर्न मिलेगा जो हम स्पेशलाइज लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप में देख सकते हैं उस पैटर्न के हिसाब से हम डिजीज को डायग्नोज कर सकते हैं रिमेंबर इनडायरेक्ट इम्यूनोफ्लोरस इम्पॉर्टेंट है इट इज गॉट प्रोग्नोस्टिक वैल्यू स्पेशली इन केस ऑफ पेफिकस वेलकरस ओके सो इनडायरेक्ट वी टेक द बिलेट ऑफ द पेशेंट कंटेनिंग द प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडीज उसके अगेंस्ट हम टेक्ट एंटीबॉडी यूज करते हैं और सबस्टेट कुछ और होता है मांकी सोफेगस होता है या स्किन ऑफ नाव एंटीबॉडी होता है इसके अंदर एंटीजन मौजूद होती हैं ये एंटीबॉडीज उस एंटीजन के साथ कंबाइन करती हैं उसके अगेंस्ट इसके अगेंस्ट फिर ये एंटीबॉडीज हैं जो टेक्ड हैं तो प्रेसली जब तीनों इंक्यूबेट करते हैं हमें लोकलाइजेशन मिल जाती है एक स्पेशल पैटर्न मिल जाता है वेर एज इन डायरेक्ट इम्यूनोफ्लोरस पेरी लेजल स्किन ऑफ द पेशेंट विद पेम्फिगर्स पेम्फिगोइड और डी एच इज टेकन दीज आर टेक्ट प्राइमरी एंटीबॉडीज these combine with the antigens here so we can see the fluorescence pattern i hope you got it now what is happening in pemphigus the antibodies produce against desmoglobin 1 desmoglobin 3 basically and are r desmoglobin 1 
desmoglin 3 or 1 depending on the type of the pemphigus. So, pemphigus vulgaris is the most common type. Out of 70 percent of cases of pemphigus are of pemphigus vulgaris type. Worldwide incidence is around 0.5 to 3.2 cases per lake per year. It mostly involves the middle age, 30 to 60 years. We are also encountering many patients in the early age group. Remember, in our setup. This is the pest physiology of Pemphigus vulgaris. These are abnormal immunoglobulin IgG production. These binds with the desmoglin 3 found in the uh, desmosome. These are basically antigens. This combines with this antigen, leading to the uh, cascade of reactions, causing release of uh, proteolytic enzymes which causes epithelial cell pro separation, the hallmark of pemphigus vulgaris or acanthulysis. This occurs at suprabasal layer. So, IgG is produced, autoimmune antibodies combines with the desmoglin 3 mainly in pemphigus vulgaris, which activates the complement cascade of reaction occurs with the releasing of the uh, proteolytic enzymes which causes cleavage and separation of the keratinocytes which we call it acantholysis leading to the cleavage formation and bully. This occurs at suprabasal layer in case of pemphigus vulgaris. Pemphigus vulgaris life threatening condition. Remember it has got very long course because the, uh, the cleavage is within the epidermis, the therefore bullies are fragile and easily eroded. Sometimes we can only see the erosions, not actually the bully. Patient is coming at the initial stage, we might be able to see the flaccid blisters. Large area of the body are involved especially scalp, face, follicular areas, groin and pressure points. More importantly, there is mucosal environment. Remember this thing, you see here mucosal environment, oral mucosa is involved here. Nikolsky sign, as we discussed already, will be positive in pemphigus vulgaris. One layer sliding over the another layer of putting a sliding pressure by a finger. It may produce erosion. That is Nikolsky sign. Positive in pemphigus vulgaris, positive in the toxic epidermal necrosis. Here you can see the large areas of the erosions. Large areas. erosions, you can't see the vesicles itself, but erosions, the vesicles have eroded. This is another slide showing the erosion. But the erosion is, as we discussed already in the basic terminology lecture, erosion is partial loss of epidermis. These are complications associated with pemphigus vulgaris. Infections most important. Major cause of death is, of course, septicemia. Here. Infection occurs. Why there is infection? Increased chance of infection. One main reason is the skin is raw and eroded. It becomes point of entry for different bugs. Remember this thing. And moreover, we are using steroids and other immunosuppressive therapy which makes patient immunocompromised 
and so makes uh, making them susceptible to different uh, infections so raw area and immunosuppressive both due to the infections then there are nutrient deficiencies because the severe oral involvement intake will be poor of course patient will be sick so uh, that leads to the nutrition deficiencies then there are some complications related to the therapy like if you talk about uh, steroids steroids leads to the osteoporosis hypertension diabetes mellitus kuchugait syndrome if you use the ever using the immunosuppressive therapy like azathioprine it may lead to the suppression of bone marrow hepatitis because they are hepatotoxic and the suppression is hepatotoxic too so uh, because the disease has got long course patient may end up with the depression there are so many psychological problems there are home problems leading to the depression anxiety dermatology life quality index becomes very poor depression may also occur because of the long term steroid usage or more cause of depression this is variety of the pemphigus vulgaris we call it pemphigus vegetans here we can see the vegetative lesions the cursed lesions mainly occurring in flagellars initially there is bullia pustule they leading to the vegetative lesions is very rare not common this is very important type of pemphigus we call it pemphigus foliaceous here the antibodies are against the desmoglein 1 mainly which is found mainly mostly in the upper most layer of epidermis stratum corneum so because the lesion uh, the bully is very superficial and uh, having very thin roof so uh, so we not able to see the bully itself but we see you see the crested moist scaly lesions mostly on seborrheic distribution what are different seborrheic distribution areas face scalp and the chest see this can't see the bully here because lesions uh, the roof is very very thin and ruptured very very initial stage because this muscle one is not present in the uh, mucosa there may not be mucosa involvement a very rare mucosa involvement this type of pemphigus foliaceous got good prognosis patient response to low dose of steroids remember this is very endopemphigus uh, foliaceous we call it pemphigus erythematosus or senior usher syndrome clinically there uh, is overlap clinically as well histopathologically even on immunofluorescence there is overlap between the uh, pemphigus foliaceous and lupus erythematosus we can see the erythematous plaques in the butterfly distribution and scaly lesions and the seborrheic uh, seborrheic uh, dermatitis distribution of the uh, pemphigus foliaceus so malar rash and the scaly lesions of the pemphigus foliaceus if you do the direct peripherals you you will see the both patterns pattern of uh, pemphigus foliaceus this fishnet appearance and there is a bend at the dermo epidermal junction of IgG and IgM which is a feature of the lupus erythematosus there will be associated photosensitivity and if you take send the blood for ANA we will become positive in 30 to 80 percent of the cases so overlap between the uh, pemphigus foliaceous and lupus erythematosus
perineoplast pemphigus is a very severe form of pemphigus severe mucosal and body involvement it follows mostly lymphoproliferative disorder like non hodgkin lymphoma cla a kesselman tumor may follow thymomas sarcomas clinically you see the mixed picture with severe look the lesions may be targeted type polymorphic means different patterns of the lesions and the response to treatment will be very poor unless you treat the primary cause that is the neoplasm in this condition there is a necrosis of keratinocytes remember this thing coming to the uh, diagnosis of pemphigus of course clinical diagnosis first there will be clinical suspicion the, then you will proceed with the histopathology and histopathology you will see the intraepidermal blister this is the epidermis this is super basal super basal layer which is intact here see the acrylosis is Uh, because the uh, cleavage is in supra basal layer above the basal layer this is cleavage you can see here acrylatic cells because the dermosomes is attacked cells are we become separated we call it acantholiasis supra basal cleavage remember this is the pattern which we see on the uh, direct immunofluorescence fish net appearance because the uh, antigen is between the cells there is some of the between the cells and not inside the cells so antibody will, com will combine with antigen which is between the cells so that area will fluoresce so fish net appearance instead of the cells is not fluorescing sort of cells is fluorescing same pattern you will find in the pemphigus foliaceous too how you treat pemphigus vulgaris vulgaris of course the steroids are the main stay of treatment we use moderate to high dosage here mainly uh, prednisolone is used or pulsed iv methyl prednisolone which is used on monthly basis immunosuppressive agents are added which act as steroid sparing agents that include azathioprine most commonly used or the mycophenolate mofetil or cyclophosphamide so combination of this and uh, either of this treatment is long term you may continue this on the maintenance therapy for years remember the associated complications you need to take care to of those things like you need to take care of the bone you need to uh, take care of uh, mucosa you need to take care of the chances of getting infections so all those things are important here this is the uh, new uh, therapy anti cd2 monoclonal ant antibody or rituximab not commonly used in our setup but it's very effective general management is very important in case of pemphigus the raw eroded areas you need to take care of the those areas hygiene maintaining high good hygiene very important washing those areas and application of the uh, liquid paraffin uh, dipped uh, gauze pieces 
and the antibiotic creams and oral antibiotics to prevent the uh, secondary birth infection, oral assistive or IV antibiotics depending on the uh, severity of environment to for preventing the secondary birth infections, water elect IV, uh, maintaining of IV line if the large areas are involved and uh, taking care of nutrition very important. The oral hygiene is very important here because there will be erosions there. So, there are always chances of candida. So, oral hygiene using anti candidal preparations, uh, good uh, mouthwashes, very, very important here. Treatment will continue for years. It has got wrong relapsing course. Bullis mephigod is among the most common immunobullous disorder. It usually affects elderly, remember. Pemphigus are affecting the middle age. This is elderly mainly. Hair antibodies are directed against the hemidesmosomes, which are found in lamina lucida. The bully may be precipitated by the uh, pruritus two to three of uh, by two to three weeks. The bullies are usually fo found on the phalanges of lower abdomen, thighs, axilla, axilla, face, and scalp are relatively spread. These bully heal with uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because the cleavage is a bit deeper. It leaves the pigmentation. Nikoski sign will be negative here. Remember, Nikoski sign is not positive in case of bullous pemphigoid. And other different features from pemphigus vulgaris is the mucous environment. It's very rare here. In this pic, we can see the tense bully. This is tense because the roof is thick. More bullies here, or tense bully. We can see the uh, erythema here. The skin may be erythematous, or maybe articular lesions present in case of bullous pemphigoid. This is histopathological section of the patient with the bullous pemphigoid. You can see here is the subepidermal bully. This is whole is epidermis. The cells are mostly eosinophils. This is direct immunofluorescence, direct immunofluorescence of bullous pemphigoid. You can see here linear bend at the basement membrane zone of IgG and C3 mostly. Linear bend. Sometimes there is the uh, local involvement of the bullous pemphigoid where you can use the only topical steroids. Moreover, remember bullous pemphigoid can be self-limiting or may be very mildly present. So, sometimes topical steroid will do if there is a local environment. If there is involvement with more, large areas involved, we can start on the uh, oral steroids and other immunosuppressive agents like azathioprine and mycophenolate mofetil. Remember, the dose of steroids here will be less as compared to pemphigus. Response is excellent. Prognosis is very good. We can also use the uh, rituximab here, like in pemphigus vulgaris, anti CD20 monoclonal antibody.
Now briefly about uh, of one condition which occurs in in pregnancy in third trimester or in the postnatal phase. We call it pemphigoid gestationis. This condition presents severe pruritus with articulate and wheels. Periumbilical areas are involved, thighs are involved, and abdomen. There is rarely mucosal involvement in this case. This may recur with subsequent pregnancies or with taking oral contraceptives or perimenstrually. Remember, just remember this pemphigoid gestation is type of pemphigoid occurring in the pregnancy. This is very rare type of uh, pemphigoid. We call it mucous membrane pemphigoid or cicatrical pemphigoid. There is subepidermal blistering and the hallmark of these conditions are adhesions of fibrosis involving mainly the mucosal surfaces like here adhesions around the eyes and oral mucosa. This is very important uh, slide showing difference between the pemphigus and bullous pemphigoid. If we talk of age, pemphigus vulgaris mainly occur in young and middle age, whereas bullous pemphigoid occur in the old age. Type of bully are flaccid in case of pemphigus vulgaris and tense in case of bullous pemphigoid. Oral lesions are almost always present in case of pemphigus vulgaris uh, and are rare in case of bullous pemphigoid. Nikolsky sign will be positive in pemphigus vulgaris and will be negative in the bullous pemphigoid. Or histopathologically, the cleavage is within the epidermis in case of pemphigus vulgaris and subepidermal in case of the bullous pemphigoid. Type of antibodies are anti desmosomes in case of the uh, pemphigus vulgaris and anti hemidesmosomes in case of bullous pemphigoid. On immunofluorescence, we can see the fishnet appearance in case of pemphigus vulgaris and linear subepidermal type in case of bullous pemphigoid. Response to treatment is very good in case of pemphigoid, where you use the low dose of steroids, and in case of pemphigus vulgaris, high dose of steroids are used. This is very itchy condition associated with gluten entropathy. There is sensitivity present against the gluten. We call it dermatitis herpetiformis. It's very itchy. The lesions are grouped and papulovascular type. You can also see the excoriations because a very itchy condition. You may not be able to see the vesicles because easily ruptured, secondary to scratching and itching. Invol involved areas mostly accessory aspects of the uh, knees, elbows, and buttocks, shoulders. Distribution is symmetrical, remember this thing. Gluten sensitivity is present in more than 90% of the cases. The antibody involved are IgA. Many patients may present, uh, many patients have the uh, gut involvement and may be symptomatic, presenting with bloating, constipation, diarrhea. They are associated, this uh, DH may be associated with HLA DQ2 and DQ8. Males are involved twice as females, the age is 20 to 55 years of involvement. 
oral lesions will also be present. Here we can see the group lesions. This is commonest site, knees, excoriation there. We cannot see the vesicles already ruptured because of the itching. Very itchy condition. Group lesions, that's why it's called as herpetiform. Like herpes, virus is not the cause, remember. This is automobile single cell, not a virus, but the, the lesions are group. That's why it's a herpetiform. We call it herpetiform. One more picture showing elbows. See the group, grouped excoriated lesions. Very itchy condition. Here the uh, different diagnosis will be SKBs because SKB is also very itchy condition, eczema. Remember, SKBs will present with night itching. There will be history of uh, itching in the family. And you can see the burrows and very classical distribution of the lesions. Lesion will involve the axilla, periumbilical areas, between the finger web, genital area in case of SKBs. Where in case of dermatitis herpetiformis, it's extensive distribution, bilateral, symmetrical, the involvement of buttocks, shoulders, remember. And they associated glu uh, gluten entropathy. And the, as far as eczema are concerned, there are different type of eczema. So, a type of eczema has its own presentation. Discrete eczema has its own presentation. You can easily differentiate. Okay, if there is any doubt, you can always send the, uh, take the biopsy and send for the histopathology and the uh, immunofluorescence. There are, there are sub epidermal blisters in case of the DH. There are IgA antibodies present, again, dermal antigens, and deposited in the papillary dermis. How you diagnose? Of course, clinical is important, as we discussed earlier. You can take the biopsy specimen, send for HG section. You can see the sub epidermal cleavage. You can send samples for direct immunofluorescence. Fluorescence, you will see the granular deposits of IgA. You can send the billet because, as I told you before, there will be associated gut involvement. Can, you can send the billet for IgA anti antiomycid antibodies or IgA tissue transglutaminase antibodies, as we send in the celiac disease. These antibodies. IgA epidermal transglutamine antibodies are specific with the dermatitis herpetiformis and uh, not, uh, this is not done in many setups, not commonly available. You need to check for nutrition deficiencies because there is associated cut involvement. You check for the CBC, serum iron level, zinc, vitamin B12. Gut biopsy and endoscopy is mostly not recommended unless there are some symptoms. If you do it, take the biopsy, you can see the filtering of villi in proximal small intestine. The lesions, the threatening will be present as escape lesion or patchy, whereas the involvement in serial disease is more severe. This is the diagnosis. Uh, this shows the histopathology section of the DH. You can see the subepidermal bully in the papillary dermis. These are cells are mostly neutrophils and sometimes eosinophils. See here, this is a diary immunofluorescence. You can see the granular deposit at the papillary dermis. This is papillary dermis. You can see the granular deposition. This is fluorescing. There will be IgA here, immunoglobulin A involved, and DH. How you treat dermatitis herpetiformis? Of course, importantly, gluten free diet. This will reduce the symptoms, will improve the itching, the lesions will be improved. And uh, of course, the need for depth zone, which is the drug of choice, 
will be decreased. Depsone is given in the dose of 25 to 100 milligrams daily and the response is prone. You see the response within 48 hours. Remember to check for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase before starting a Depsone as deficiency of this will cause a severe hemolysis. You need to check for the CBCs, fasting blood sugar and LFTs too before starting on the Depsone. This is a linear IgA dermatosis. We discussed about the uh, granular deposition in derm dermal hyperdeformis, but here the presentation is linear, like pemphigoid. There are two types, adult and uh, basically two, uh, two, uh, two spectrums, adult linear IgA disease and chronic bullous dermatosis of childhood. Mucosa will be involved in both. In adults, there will be uh, bullous eruption and on trunk and limbs, mucose involvement will be there. In children, the mostly endogenital area, thighs, abdomen, and limbs are involved. This condition is often misdiagnosed. The blistering may present in annular form. like cluster of jewels. This is known as string of pearl. Annular lesions. On the initial lesion, the eruption in, in the surrounding the initial lesion, eruption in the, in the annular form. This is known as a string of pearl, very typical in chronic bullous disease of childhood. You treat it with the depth zone and erythromycin. Biopsy can be taken, sent for histopathology where you can see the subepidermal blister. If you send direct amylophorus, you will see the linear band of IgA. This is the treatment. I repeat again erythromycin, it has got, has got definite role. Depth zone works very well, excellent in drug of choice. Sometimes steroids may also be used. Depsone is drug of choice. Remember to check for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase before starting on Depsone. This is histopathology, sub-epidermal blister, like in dermatitis herpetiformis or pemphigoid. On immunofluorescence, you can see the linear band. But bent hair will be of IgA. In case of pemphigoid, it was IgG and C3. This is IgA. This is different from the dermat, though it's IgA, but different from dermatitis and herpetiformis, is that there is no papillary dermis involvement, there is no glenoid deposition. And I only see the linear band of IgA. Okay. Now coming to more conditions not common will be covered in some other lecture. This is porphyria cutaneous strata. There are two types. One is congenital, one is acquired type. Acquired type occurs in male due to alcohol or in females due to oral contraceptives. Other causes can be chlorinated, chlorinated hydrocarbons, hepatitis C infections. What actually is the problem with PCT? The problem is with the accumulation of uroporphyrin. This results because of deficiency of uroporphyrin decarboxylase. There is severe photosensitivity in PCT. The, uh, there is blister formation on the exposed areas, on the hands especially. You can see on hands, you can see the uh, hands and face. On hands, you can see the uh, scarring and milia formation. 
Yine bile simal girerken ses. So there will also be hyper trichosis on the face. These are scarring secondary to the uh, blistering. Photosensitivity very common in PCT and hypertrichosis in case. So, what is the treatment? Avoid precipitant factors like alcohol, estrogen, chlorinated hydrocarbons. You treat it with chloroquine, very low dose. If you give the high dose, it may precipitate PCT. So low dose is very important, it's given twice weekly. When section is done, because there is hemochromatosis, lot of iron overload, will help in relieving the symptoms. And of course, don't forget giving the sunblock. There are photosensitivity here. Some other causes of the uh, bullous formation, see just see the pics. This is the bullous diabetic aurum occurring mostly in the poor, with poor glycemic control. History will be of diabetes in the patient. These are bullous associated with erythematosis. We call it bullous AD. As we discussed before, there is basal cell degeneration in uh, lack, uh, lack of paleness and uh, Lupus erythematosus that may lead to the bullous formation, both of those conditions. This is blistering on the hands, we call it pomphilex or this hydrotic eczema. This is type of eczema, very itchy, sometimes painful condition. This will be covered in the eczema lecture. And this bully is secondary to the trauma. If you wear the, some tight shoes or walk barefoot for long distance, you may develop the bully, fracture bully or traumatic bully, may be painful. This bully is secondary to burn. These are because of the cold exposure. So heat or cold both can lead to the bullous formation. Thank you.